If you're in the market for a home solar power system, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video because I'm gonna be teaching you five things that you need to know before you ever invite a solar salesman into your home. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping families get their home set up to survive a loss of the electric grid. And here at Solar Surge, we're primarily doing solar power, renewable energy, battery backup, and sometimes generator systems as well. Now on today's video, I'm gonna be teaching five things that you need to know and understand before you ever invite a solar salesman into your home. As I'm sure many of you have seen, there are ads for solar power everywhere. And a lot of these ads are misleading in the things like free solar program or the government is gonna pay you to go solar. Um, what I'm gonna be doing today is explaining how this all actually works and some of the, the preparation work and some of the questions that you wanna ask yourself before you ever talk to a solar salesman. So the first question is, what is your goal with looking at solar power? You know, people choose to install solar power for a number of reasons. Some people just like the environmental benefit of it. They like the idea of going green, and if they can reduce their own carbon emissions, that's the payback for them. It's not even about dollars and cents. Other people, and this is probably gonna be the largest group, other people are concerned with the dollar for dollar payback. They know that if they just keep throwing money away to the power company every month, they're never gonna get any of that money back. So they'd rather invest in an asset like a solar power system that will pay for itself in the form of reducing or eliminating your monthly electric bill. So, you know, it could be financial return on investment is your motivation. Another, another group is concerned primarily with energy independence and self-sufficiency. And so that's why here at Solar Surge, we do a lot of solar power with battery backup. So we're not just gonna knock out your electric bill, but we're also gonna make sure that all of the critical systems in your home would never be without power, grid up, grid down, or even if there is no grid. So that type of buyer is really gonna be concerned with security and self-sufficiency. So you wanna ask yourself, again, before talking to the salesman, what is your goal with looking at solar? Environmental impact, financial payback, or just self-sufficiency and emergency prep, or maybe a combination of those, because that's really gonna steer and guide the conversation. All right, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is what type of equipment to select for your solar system. Now, I know a lot of people will look at the solar panels themselves first, but it's actually more important that you select the correct inverter system than it is the correct solar panel. The inverter and the inverter manufacturer is gonna have more impact on the functionality and the reliability of the system than, than the solar panels themselves. So, in this case, you wanna look at if you're just doing a purely grid-tied system, and again, this is for people that are just concerned primarily with offsetting their electric bill. You know, for a purely grid-tied system, you wanna look at what is the efficiency of the equipment, but more importantly, you wanna look at what is the reliability of the equipment. Because I can tell you, I've been doing this long enough now, it doesn't really matter what it says on paper, when you get these equipment installed in the field, what you really wanna make sure is that it is going to work. And that's important for both you as a potential system owner, and it's also important for the, the installation company. You do not want to be installing equipment that is going to require you to keep sending somebody to do service and repairs and replacements. It's just it's a headache for everybody, and it's very costly for the installer. So first thing you want to look at is what is the correct inverter system. Uh, if you're doing a solar with battery backup for emergency preparedness, you're going to need to do a loads analysis first before you can select the appropriate inverter or combination of inverters. So if you've seen our previous video, uh, then you'll recall on how to make an energy budget. You actually wanna do an analysis on all of the home's critical systems, how much power they draw, and how frequently they are running, so you have an idea of what size inverter you're gonna need and what size battery you're gonna need to make sure that you can carry all of those critical systems. Now the solar panels are an important component to this as well, of course. And you're going to want to select a solar panel that, you know, first, you just like the way it, it looks on your home. Uh, that's why most of the systems we do now, we've gone to the all black, you know, all black style of solar panel. So the aesthetics are going to be important because this thing is going to be on your house, you know, permanently, pretty much, you know, once, once we get the installation completed. But you're also going to want to look at what's the warranty on the solar panels. 
Uh, pretty much all solar panels come with a 25 year warranty. But what you're gonna wanna look at is what is the rated power guarantee in that 25th year? Uh, standard panels will guarantee between 80 and 85% of rated power in year 25, whereas premium panels will generally guarantee 90 to 92% of rated power in year 25. So the premium panels degrade at a much, much slower rate, and that shows up in the warranty. And then of course, we need to make sure that we match the solar panel uh, power rating and quantity to match your target goal for energy generation. Uh, again, this comes down to what is your goal? Is it targeting electric bill offset? And we're designing the system to match a certain energy production to offset your electric bill. Or are we designing towards an emergency backup uh, set of power requirements where we, we may not need to cover the entire electric bill, we may need to just cover the critical loads uh, listed uh, on your, um, your loads analysis. So again, a lot of this depends on your unique needs. Then the third thing you're going to want to look at in terms of equipment is what type of battery uh, to get if you're doing a battery backup system. So again, when you do an analysis of your critical loads, you're going to want to have an idea of how much energy the critical systems in your home are using so that when you look at battery capacities, you know, typically each battery pack now with the new lithium uh, iron phosphate battery packs are going to be 10 kilowatt hours per battery pack. So for example, if you're just running uh, refrigerator, freezer, lights, and TVs, a single battery pack may be sufficient for you. However, if what you really want to do is have grid down protection for heavy systems like your central air conditioning unit, then you may have to go to two or three battery components. So all of that should come out during the, the design consultation or the, the, the conversation. Uh, you'd be very, very leery of somebody who's trying to tell you or, or sell you a solution before you've actually discussed what your requirements are. Okay, so the next thing you want to look at is how to select the right contractor to do your installation. Once you've gone through the process of understanding what your needs, goals, and requirements are, and getting an idea of what type of solar and or battery equipment is gonna match that requirement, then you wanna find the contractor best suited to provide that type of solution, okay? Some contractors favor a certain brand of equipment versus others. Some only have one brand that they can offer you. So once you know what your needs are and what your equipment preferences are, that's when it's time to start evaluating and interviewing the contractor and really you know, uncovering what is their competency with the particular equipment that you're preferring for your project. Now, sometimes you may find that the contractor has a multiple of different options available for equipment and, and they can help you decide which one will, will best fit your requirements, but that needs to be the order. Goals first, equipment, or at least a general idea of the equipment you're looking for, then we find the right contractor to deliver on that equipment. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to look at, of course, uh, in addition to price, is how long has the contractor been in business and what is their profitability? Because I'll tell you, you know, having done this for a number of years now, oftentimes it's the newcomers into the industry that offer the lowest bids. They're, they're trying to, they're trying to you know, grow their businesses and uh, they generally have lower overhead than the larger, more established companies. However, remember that these solar power systems come with a 25 year warranty. And so most of the established companies are, although they're not gonna have the cheapest price, they may be the better partner for you long term. If you're considering, you know, is this company financially healthy? What's the chance that they're gonna be here to service my warranty over this 25 year term of the warranty? So you wanna look at all of these things. You know, one great place to start is go to the manufacturer's website directly. If you have a particular inverter system that you're looking for, you know, for example, if you go to Enphase, uh, Enphase's website for a microinverter system, they'll have a listing of contractors in your area. That might be a good place to start. Or of course, if you're looking for an estimate, we're happy to help you with that here at Solar Surge as well. We have installation partners in 31 states now, so we do cover most of the areas where solar is, is being installed. And so we'd be happy to help you out and get you connected with a, a qualified licensed contractor in your area. Another question that you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is, do you wanna finance the purchase of your solar power system? Or are you in a position where you can just do a, an outright cash purchase of your solar power system? Now, something that's not always disclosed in the solar sales process is that generally, if your solar company is offering you financing, solar financing, 
there are some, some bank fees and some closing costs that they have to pay on their side to offer that, that financing to you. Okay, it's not necessarily a massive amount of fees, but there are fees in just about any kind of solar financing that's offered. So if you are in a position that you can pay cash for your system, or if you have access to credit on your own, whether it be a home equity loan or, or what have you, you may wanna let the installer know that up front so that they can offer you the most, most competitive cash pricing. All right, and then finally, you're gonna to need to compare the quotes as they come in. Uh, if you're doing a competitive bid, I know many homeowners will generally get uh, estimates from two or three different companies. When those bids come in, oftentimes the proposals can look, can look very, very different on paper, and so it may be unclear what you're looking at. Here are two things that you wanna look at with the price quote, okay? The first is, what is your price per watt? If you take your total system cost, before any rebates or incentives are taken out, just take your total system cost and then divide it by the total system wattage, right? And the way you get the total system wattage is it's the number of solar panels multiplied by the, the number of watts per solar panel. So for example, if, if you have a nine kilowatt system proposal using 30 pieces of 300 watt solar panels, okay, that is a, that is a 9,000 watt system. Just take the solar panel count multiplied by the solar panel wattage. So that'll give you sort of an objective metric is you know, price per watt. How much, uh, how much are, you, are they charging you per unit of power on the roof? And another very similar and equally important metric is dollars per uh, kilowatt hours of energy production over the first year. So if you don't see a figure on your, on your solar quote of uh, annual energy production for the first year, uh, you should be asking your salesperson, how much energy is this system gonna produce? during the first year, so that you can make an objective evaluation of dollars per kilowatt hours generated during the first year. Well, folks, this has been a discussion of how to shop for solar power for beginners. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the information that we have on the channel, be sure to click on that like button and also click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the new videos that we're putting out. And of course, if you know somebody else who would benefit, go ahead and just share the link directly with them. Well, thank you for tuning in to the channel today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.